finger on the line. That's the other thing, too. Oh, got him. Oh, this is a good one, dude. Good one. back to the channel everybody it is time to do some family camping and today's video is brought to you by the greatest Guggen month sales happening out the wazoo y'all you can use code LFG to receive another 10% off your orders and we got tackle Tuesdays happening every Tuesday in the month of November so link down in the description make sure to go check it out get some swag all right so I try to do this trip every year where I come up to the river and I do a little camping. Uh, I started doing this a few years ago. Me and my buddy Lance. Uh, me and Lance played baseball together back in a previous life. Uh, somehow we ended up just living like right down the road from each other's. E each other's. <laughs> English. It's a funny thing. Anyways, this year is, is interesting because I've got uh, a family of four now. And we've got the Opus Camper, which is just tailor-made for this situation, just camping in tight spots, uh, off grid, this is, you know, no shore power. This is somewhere where I'd normally sleep in my truck or sleep in a tent, uh, but now we got the Opus camper and it's great for the kids and everything. So uh, my buddy Lance, he's got his camper dialed up right next to mine. Bonfire right in there. We got the river streams right here. We've stocked rainbow trout in the river. So we're doing some trout fishing. And the greatest thing is it's finally fall in Texas. I mean, it is cold. It's in the forties right now. Uh, weather's gonna be amazing. But right now we got to set up the Opus. So what I wanted to do for everyone that hasn't seen this thing yet, uh, I've done a full tour of it. There's a video on my channel about it. Uh, but this is a really unique camper. It's, it's made to go off grid. Uh, it's got a full independent suspension and it just folds up really compact. It's only 15 feet long. And when I undo it, it'll end up being uh, about 20 feet long. And it's got a, you know, a king size bed in there and it's got a little, little bed for kids. It's actually got bunk beds in there. So just perfect for a family of four. First thing you gotta do is level it out and we're actually pretty daggum level steph and the kids are not here yet so it's my job today um they're coming up tomorrow it's my job today to get everything situated or right, that's that's good enough that's good enough i just got to raise these jacks up should take me about an hour to get this baby set up and uh, we might even be able to do a little fishing tonight Since this thing is Australian, everything seems to be uh, backwards. Like all the light switches and cranks for all the turns. Go. Maybe the other one. Roof's up, let's go inside. Wide open space on the inside. A little bit of a rough ride. All my stuff fell out of my pantry. So I didn't have my, my rubber mats on the bottom. So everything down there just slid out and busted. Bruised my nanners. There's a lot of casualties, but I need to put those little liners in there. But 
This is kind of how Stephanie has organized this, this program. I knew those were going to fall out. It's peaches and pickles and heavy stuff. We got, you know, chocolate to make s'mores. We got bread for sandwiches. Little snackies. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. And then the all-important little snack drawer. Switchy spots. Excuse me. And probably the most important feature to this thing that I added is this vacuum. Spilled my coffee all over the floor, so just doing a little sucking here. And then a new addition I'm super excited about. ShamWiles, baby. Got some ShamWiles. Got these for the bathroom, because there's a situation with the bathroom. I need to figure out, I need to, I need to get with my buddy Lance, because he's, he's dang near an engineer. My problem is, you know, use the shower, Things get a little wet inside because there's not much drainage. And then I get up to go to the bathroom at night, or somebody does, and wha-bam! And it's, you can take a bath in there. There's so much water. There needs to be a better drain, but what I want to do is, is put a little, like either teak wood or some sort of wood, a uh, little duck board in here. So I'll build that where it's like little slats where the water can go through, but you stand on it, you get the nice warm feeling of wood and uh, you don't have to deal with the water being on your feet. It's just gonna sit below. But uh, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna do a little home cleaning video for you guys right now. Be sure to smash that like button for uh, Mr. Clean Vibes. Just kidding, that's enough of that. Just wanted to test out my squeegee. All right, let's roll out the big bath. Just to give you folks an example of why when I have a, a wood project or a engineering problem, I call Lance. Because this may look like a part of his camper, but uh, he built this custom, custom job right here. That's a nice burner, by the way. Who makes that? Uh, partner stove. Partner stove, full industrial strength. It's like the big in the overlanding good to go there so this this attaches to his camper right here on a little what kind of cleat do you uh, classify that french cleat kind of metal french cleat there you go and then uh this over here is this holds your is this more burners or what is this this is all my all my this is your pantry it's kind of cooking stuff that you built all of this yep you bought this but you built yep. the table you put in the inserts here to slide this out you built this all these metal parts, handles, so this is installed. Kind of, oh, this is, where'd it go? There it is. Oh, the cutting board, cutting board. big cutting board. A little bit of prep. Stove, that slides in and the feet come in underneath it, so. That's pretty slick, dude. And where, do you, where do you store that when you're it's, riding? It's right here, it's, a, it's the, technically it's the first thing out and the last thing in of the camper. Gotcha. And I made it dimensionally to fit right here. Yeah, it's relatively light. I like it. Part. Look at the craftsmanship. Even the the exterior is uh, is lined. This is this is oh, a little bit not close. Well, oh no! Shoot. So this oh. is a uh, this, only the user that built this can close it. You got to take these wires right here. Well, if I do right, there you go. Oh damn! You got this thing. That is an track. engineering default on my part. Well, everything else, but it works. Pretty flawless, dude. I like cooking outside. We don't. We have a stove inside the pop up, but I never use it. We cook coffee in the morning from Holly and make breakfast when it's like 10 degrees outside everything else is out here that's my boy lance he's uh you got a youtube channel i do do these things i have a, i have a video not not making it from start to finish but i went over like an overview and parts list on how i made it and it's pretty popular people that have pop-up campers i would say so yeah camping mods you're, camping you're mods. a good channel for camping mods yeah. and we're gonna put the heater to the test the true mccombie to the test which is another really cool feature of this thing again I already did a, a video like explaining this, but now I have some experience with it. So uh, I have to say that this puppy right here, the True Macombi is awesome for heating your water and your air. It's very efficient. With the wife and kids, I have yet to like run the whole heat. And it, you know, it's, it's just like being at home. You use way more water, you use way more AC heat. Gotta keep the kids and the wife comfy. Us dudes. We tend to rough it a little bit, uh, a little bit more, but uh, 
you know, it's in our nature, I guess. Other crap that I've brought on this trip, I shouldn't say crap, the firewood, very important. Very important, we're about to start unloading that and get our chairs out. I got a big chair for my wife. She, happy wife is a happy ha life. Happy wife, happy life, you know what I'm saying? More crap that's huge, that gets in the way that I don't want to carry. My little chair's back there, it weighs about uh, less than a pound, it folds up, it's tiny. I brought the big recliner chair with the uh, table side, um, you know, food tray and all that stuff for her. I've also got my bike in here. I've got the Baku. Suiting up, you want to go do this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Waited all summer for this. All right, so you're going full fly, dedicated? Uh, yeah. The Iowa fly fish only, unless it's windy. And then I'll throw a spinner rod, light tackle. He's prepared to school me in the art of Euro nymphing. Hey, don't be lying now. What? I said you're going to school me. You don't know yet? You're not sure? I mean, you've been talking like this is the greatest thing ever. So I would just want to see if it's going to be my old handy dandy spinners. You know what I mean? So there's, there's really, there's, there's a lot of ways to trap fish, y'all. But if you are a purist, you go, you go dry fly or you go some sort of fly. I don't really like to fish anything, especially things I could put in a pan. But uh, I am fishing with a rod that I use for crappie fishing that is actually a trout rod. Um, it's a trout panfish rod. So I've got a 10 pound braid or 15 pound braid on here, seven pound leader. Obviously I gotta take the crappie jig off. I'm gonna throw some spinners, little things like that, little panther martins and just stuff, you know, that you would normally think of when you're trout fishing. Um, and I'm probably going to switch to the fly later on. I've got a fly rod rigged up here. I've got two fly rods with me. And I want to try this Euro nymphing. I think it's really interesting. We've got just a few hours of daylight. So it's just time to give it a dangle. Burn off a few calories before we make some dinner. All right. How you got your net? You're all... Uh... Oh, I do. <laughs> Where's my stringer at? You're, uh, I got a string on me. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. All right. Stay close to you. You, you. you got a guide right here. You got... oh, Okay. <laughs> Dang. I mean, 10 years of fish in the water. You like that, don't what, you? What is that? That's, that's where my fly rod is. that rod for goes. your rods? Yeah, so when we go tomorrow to catch and release, you hang it up there. Homemade, by the way. Wow, suction cups. Yeah, because the ones on Amazon are like uh, 180 bucks, and I wasn't paying that. Like this, this is where I keep it. Right, yeah. And then when I get to where I want to go, I have this. Okay. And then I do like that. So then when I grab the trout, there it is, boom. Wow. You'll get there. <laughs> You'll get there. I'm not sure I will. I'll just I'll just come up here once a year with you and watch you do it. This, this river's a little low. I'm going to try to, you know, first dip in the waders. Oh my goodness. Probably going to fall on my butt. Um, I've got a net. We're going to shove this into our... Well, be a little leakage in the waders. It's never good. Gosh, that comes up quick. Oh yeah, and we're getting wet in the crotch area right now. And that's that's a problem. I'm gonna tell you right now. Oh gosh, I just casted it. I look like an absolute noob berry right now. And I kind of am. We've got water. <laughs> we've got water crotch. Pretty strong. You got your stick? Any bites? No. I'm throwing a crappie jig though, so. Right here? Yeah. I mean, you can see the bottom. I definitely have leaks in my waders. Lance utilizing the stick method. Let me get you. <laughs> yeah, he filled me. Oh, dude! I just saw. I just saw one fully clear the water. Clearly, my uh, lure selection is not programmed. They are, oh my gosh, they are absolutely going ape. That's what we're gonna do right there. Definitely just dropped my pliers down here. So we're gonna play a little game called hook the pliers. Oh, almost got them. Kind of knocked them off into the deep end. That's not what you want. Okay, and uh, they're gone. I gotta go back. My feet are soaked. So 
So, waiters are definitely not impervious. Well, folks, sometimes you have waiters at work. Sometimes you don't. I'm going to take these off. We're going to see how bad the damage is. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, it's not, it is not pretty. I, I wore jeans. It's my only pair of jeans I brought, which is unfortunate. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh yeah. Oh, we are just full-blown third-grade accidents right now. This is unrecoverable, folks. I literally have steam coming off uh, my hot, wet pants. My socks, my socks are soaked. It's just, uh, it's just what it is. It's not good. Look at the steam, can you see the steam? My hot, steamy feet. So when you have wet your pants this severely, there's really only one thing to do. That's sit by a fire and drink an adult beverage. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the river looks the best I've ever seen, and honestly, fishing here for a few years. So I'm excited to get back out there, just hopefully in some better gear. And hopefully I can like cast far enough to get to them from the bank. So see you guys in the morning. All right, y'all, we got a two-mile hike in today to, uh, to a little river spot. Still got some wet waders, but we're going to get through. We're going to try to get some trout online. We've got conventional and fly backpack full of gear. Let's get it. Fish on. First one of the day. Can we say day? Sure it is. 12-incher, 13-incher. Oh man, we just walked through the dark for probably a mile and a half. I know you guys can't see crap right now. It's GoPro, but got got both of my rods here. It's time to catch some fish. And on a three weight, little 12 inches, so much fun. Oh, there we go. I'm hooked up, baby. Look at these jumpers. Got him on the trout pole. He's coming over to you, Lance. Oh! Come here, little friend. You're not really big enough to get excited about, but Fun times. Oh, there it goes. Got uh, pretty much every hook on this bait all in my nets. Pretty good one there, Jim. Lance hooked up. The Euro nymphing is killing the game. No question. No questions there. I'm getting bites every third or fourth cast, but you're on them. I may have to switch to the fly. Lance has caught like a dozen fish already using the fly technique. I'm gonna strip down. These waders are leaky. I'm gonna strip down. I'm gonna take my boots off. I'm gonna take my socks off so I'm gonna have something dry to, to get into on the walk back. Yeah, there's no rules about having pants on. You got a pretty good one there, Jim? Okay. I, I feel the, uh, the wetness. Oh yeah? Coming in. 
You hooked up. So you scooted down a little bit. You went away well, from the spot. I got tired. I got lazy. Uh huh. Out there See, I, I think it's all about the spot. You know what it is? Don't don't get me wrong. Because Jim Jimbo is back there slamming Mondos this is on really a spinner. Is this a big it's one? Not, it's not a. Uh, here, I'll give you. I'll give you the rod. You tell me. You've had a couple bites on that. Yeah. I think you just got a big nymph boner. That's a pretty good one. Eh. What do they look like? Let me see. 13 inch or? Stalker size. Oh, got him. There you go. Look at me, dude. There you go. Look at me. I don't know if you know I'm, a, I'm a Euro nympher. First, first tight line nymphing. This is, this is my first tight line nymph, nymph fish. It was the spot. You just gonna follow me all day or what? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's so much fun. And a bite. And a bite. This is a pretty good one. It's got nice color. Ooh, I'm trying to double up. Put her in the net, boys. Oh, he doesn't come off. Yeah, you have this barbless, so you gotta. Oh, it's barbless? Oh yeah. Oh, you gave me, you gave me the easy release ones. That's what I'm, that's what I'm rocking. See, when you catch so many, you gotta go barbless. <laughs> right. Well, when you don't like me, you need everyone you, you cook. So, do we need to like get some espressos out and right. maybe listen to some classical music right now? Ooh, there's another one. I see both. I like I like hee hawing them. All the conventional, but this is but see, like, a way this, bigger challenge. When you you can't you can get this in spots where you can't throw a rooster tail. Correct. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh, new see now. See, now I'm what getting. What I do it. is that when it's windy, I go traditional. When it's calm like this, I get this out. I yeah, it's like fishing soft plastics versus uh, spinnerbait. Spinner, you know, yeah, stuff when it's Ooh, real windy. Is it? Do I need to take your pole? Hang on now. I I just got a bite. So, Put your finger on the line. That's the other thing too. Oh, got him. Oh, this is a good one, dude. Good one. Dude, I'm so good, I don't need to put my finger on the line. <laughs> I just know when they're on. This is a big one. Stuck him. Stuck him on Lance's hand tie. Big boy. Little indicator's working. Yeah, my, yeah, my little, my fluoro Tag. blood knot. That's a good, uh... You wanna net this bad boy for uh, me? I'm just, he's not coming to service, that's a good sign. I think he's a 14, all day. If he's ready, I'll grab him for you. He's running. He's ready? He's running, oh, dude. Yeah. Hang on. Oh shoot, I'm, I'm, I'm too much. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a, it's a red horse oh. sucker cart, man. Gum. I had to get one of those. You got one last? Uh, I did. Yeah. Dude, what the heck? You Sucker. Got sticker things everywhere on you. You got one on top of your glove. Yeah. Right here. Okay, all right. So I've experienced the bites on my little eight foot four weight trout rod here. Now let me experience what the gods use. I can catch a mono on an ugly stick, well, but true. when you got a, a nice sensitive rod, it does make a lot of difference. Yeah, let's do a switcheroo here. See if I can get me another sucker. Oh my gosh, right away the program. Oh, uh, that was like, it was like a shark. It was like a shark hitting a cut bait. What did it feel like? <laughs> it felt amazing. I see, I see the difference. Yeah, you, you feel everything. All right, Lance, tell me how much this rod was. $900. $900. that bad boy? There we go. Was that the first cast, Justin? The first cast. Yes, sir. First cast, see ya. 
Yeah, I think you're, I think you're from your top of your rod to the bottom of your fly line, you're losing all your sensitivity. Uh, yeah, no, there's a sensitivity issue, but the, your your uh, your line set up as well. So the fly line takes away a ton of your sensitivity. Correct. And then the rod helps too. And then it, it's all about having a tight, tight line from that tip of your rod yeah. straight to that bead head. I see what's going on here. Fish on. Get in my nets. There you are. It's a pretty good one to keep, but we'll just keep fishing. Hooked up on the indicator. I'm hooked up on traditional. This one hasn't come up yet. This could be something serious. I got a big runner here. A big one? Big runner. Well, he's just pulling me around. I don't know. He doesn't feel heavy, but. You only got three pound chest on that tipper, so. Gotcha. Don't worry. I'm a crappie fisherman. Wow, this guy's just going to the moon. Look at me. Full circle nymphing. <laughs> How's that rod? The rod's good. Handles him quite well. Man, this guy's just going. That's two circles. It's a good sign when they don't come up. It he's, he's, sucker. he's not very big. I, I, like, I saw him. He's just strong, dude. Look at this guy. Oh. Thought he was ready. I can't imagine, like, a 20-incher. Come here. Let me scoop you. Let me scoop you. That's a good one. That's a good one on the fly now. Quick look at this trout. They're like a slippery snake. It's a good one though. It's a big boy. See you, bud. You gonna make it? Long, hard fight. Do I need to scoop you up again? If you don't want to live, I will put you on the stringer. There we go. Trout on the line. There's a combo. First cast in the new pool. Wham Bam Sally just comes to town. And that's a jumbo. That's a jumbo. Solid, solid fight, solid eater. All around good stuff. Come to my net. Beautiful fish. Gorgeous fish. Come here. Woo, baby. Got a stud. Look at that fish right there now. That might be the biggest one I've ever caught out here. So I've got two really nice trout. Probably a 15, 16 incher and another one about 14. Really nice fish. That one's beautiful right there. All these are stocked. So these aren't naturally occurring trout and they will die in the summer. So I don't feel bad about keeping them. The, the fight on the fly rod is definitely more fun, I think. It's just a lot more challenge, but conventional, I don't know, just something about it. I love it. love having a, just a regular fishing pole in my hand and catching, caught that last one on a little, uh, just a little spinner. 
You can catch them on a, on a variety of techniques. It's just getting the retrieve right. And a lot of these trout, if you've never done it before, they'll sit like right above the rocks. So whether you're fishing a fly or a conventional lure, you want to cast upstream, get a slow reel until you start feeling uh, the bottom and just keep it like an inch or two above that. So it's all about just speed control and don't set the hook like a bass, like on a bass or you'll lose every single trout. That's a pretty good one there. Good color. good color on it. Like it a lot, bud. It's pretty stuff. All right, let's get back out there. Just got hit. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. they in there, boy. They up in their pool in them pools. Oh my. Just hammer dogged right there. Love to see it. Love to see the adventurous fighting spirit of the American rainbow. Oh, yeah. Straight from the farm. Straight from the farm. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was telling everybody watching is that these fish are not going to live past summer anyways. So, trout love very cold, high oxygenated water. Which is not very plentiful in Texas. You know what? I'm not going to even net that guy. He's my... There we go. See you later. Give him that business. A little trout business. Oh man, this is so fun, y'all. Light tackle. They bite the crap out of it. It's such a hard strike. Man, I really am excited for my dad to come up tomorrow and experience this. Catch a few. Love doing this stuff. It's just good times. But I think we'll catch, catch one more and head back to camp. Fish on. Probably gonna be my last, last keeper of the day here. Scooped it. Get him unhooked here before he gets too crazy. Tangles up my net, don't do it, don't do it. You did it. Dang you. We done stroked him. I mean, Uncle Jim over here. Uh, he, he caught 45 easy. <laughs> Seriously caught over 40. Just absolutely crushed him. Oh, no. Oh, drop your cock. Oh, no. A sock. Dang it, man. Can't catch a break. <laughs> Took the boots off, got into the wet waders, and then I just dropped my dry socks and boots into the water for a mile and a half hike back. So. Oh, my goodness gracious. Are you going to wear one sock? Oh, I'm not gonna wear that wet sock. <laughs> that's a, that's just unfortunate. I got three trout though, dead on it. Got my limit by 8:30 in the morning. Now it's time to go get some coffee. Breakfast. Breakfast. And then the family's coming in. Very successful morning, y'all. I think we had like 60 trout between all of us. So just killed the game. I'm gonna work on my tackle. Uh, the last thing I got to do today, all the camp is set up, everything's good. We're going to dial in the tackle. Family's coming in here in just a few hours. I'm so excited to get my dad out there on the river. Hopefully if we can catch just as many. Everything better in life with a coffee. All right, y'all, we got, we got a new addition to the camper. I think it's really smart. Um, got, a, got a little game saver right here. Put in the sealer. Suck it down. got our vacuum sealed fish ready to go so we could freeze these or just save them for a later date in the trip eat them but just keeps everything nice and neat and since I don't have a cooler with ice we take these over here trout down there 
No ice. No muss, no fuss. Put it up. There you go. I had a couple of uh, incidences with my waders, but I did learn if I got a leak in my waders, just take my pants off, my socks off, and it's actually not that bad. The neoprene kept me pretty warm. The family should be rolling up any minute now so that is the the next thing on the list out here uh we're going to be traveling to some other fishing holes and uh fishing with the lfd i would appreciate it if you just go ahead and smash that like button for greatness in the outdoors and i will see you guys on the next one god bless you